simplifying rational expressions. What are rational expressions? So it is defined by if p of x and q of x are polynomials and q of x is not equal to 0, then p of x over q of x is a rational expression in x where p of x and q of x are the numerator and denominator respectively of the expression. So we're just simply saying that a rational expression is the quotient of two polynomials. So an example would be 2n all over n minus 2 or x squared plus 3x minus 10 all over 3x plus 2. In simplifying rational expressions, we have to recall some laws of exponent which are the quotient rule which is x raised to n over x raised to m is simply equal to x raised to n minus m and a negative exponent rule x raised to negative n is equal to 1 over x raised to n. Simplifying rational expressions, we just have to apply the laws of exponent for each variable and simplify the results. But we have to take note that this is only applied if both numerator and denominators are monomials. So what if the rational expressions in the numerator and the denominators are both non-monomials? You have to take note that a rational expression is in simplest form when the numerator and denominator have no common factors. Okay, so let's have an example. Let us simplify 9 over 15. So 9 is a factor of 3 times 3 and 15 is a factor of 3 times 5. So in this case, both 3 or both 9 and 15 is a factor of 3. So we can cancel 3 and this becomes 3 over 5. But take note, if we're going to simplify 3 times 3 all over 3 plus 5, we can cancel out 3 and 3 here. Since 3 and 3 is a factor of 9 here, but 3 and 5 are not factors, but rather they are just terms of the given expression. So it just simply cancel out. So the answer here would just simply be 9 over 8. So we cannot cancel anything. So how are we going to write a rational expression in simplest form? So first of all, we have to factor the numerator and the denominator completely. In this case, we have to exhaust or we have to write both expressions in its prime factored form. And then we have to cancel out common factors. So take note that you're not canceling out terms. You're canceling out factors, common factors between the numerator and the denominator. What's the difference between a factor and a term? So a factor is between a multiplication sign. A term is in between an addition or subtraction sign. So for this two example, take note, x and x in this example are terms terms of the numerator and terms of the denominator. So this means I cannot simply cancel, I cannot cancel x and x here since these two are terms of the numerator and the denominator. But for the second example, I can just simply factor out the numerator and factor out the denominator. If I'm going to factor the numerator by its GCF, so this becomes 3 times the quantity of x plus 3. And the other one would be 3 times the quantity of 2x plus 1. So both of them has a factor of 3. So I can simply cancel that one out. So that becomes x plus 3 all over 2x plus 1. Let's have some examples so that you'd be able to understand what I'm saying a while ago. Simplify. 5x minus 10 all over 5x. So, look at this one. I cannot cancel 5x and 5x here. But rather, I have to factor out first 5x minus 10. The 5x here, the two factors of the denominator would be 5 and x. Okay? 
So, factoring out the numerator, that would be 5 times the quantity of x minus 2 all over 5x. So, 5 is a factor of the numerator as well as x minus 2. The factor of the denominator, let me repeat, is 5 and x. So, both 5 in the numerator and the denominator are the common factors of the rational expression. So, we can cancel it. So, what would be left is x minus 2 all over x. So, I cannot cancel again. Eh? I cannot cancel x and x here since x is a term of the numerator. This one is a factor of the denominator, but the other one is a term. So I cannot cancel both. So that would be our final answer. x minus 2 all over x. Next example. y squared plus 3y plus 2 all over y squared minus 1. Again, don't cancel y squared. We factor out the numerator and we factor out the denominator. The factored form of the numerator is y plus 2 times the quantity of y plus 1. The denominator would be y plus 1 times the quantity of y minus 1, which is that one. Look at this. This 2, y plus 1 and y plus 2 are the factors of the numerator. y plus 1 and y minus 1 are the factors of the numerator. Both of them have y plus 1 as a factor. So we can cancel that one out. Therefore, what's left would be y plus 2 all over y minus 1. Another example. 12y plus 24 all over 48y. Again, factor the numerator. GCF is 12, so that becomes 12 times quantity of y plus 2 all over 48 has a factor of 12 and 4y. They both have a factor of 12, so I can just simply cancel the expression. So what's left would be 4y plus 2 all over 4y. Again, we cannot cancel y and y here since y is a term in the numerator and y is a factor in the denominator. Another example. 2x squared plus x all over 3x squared plus 2x. Both numerator and denominator factorable by GCF. So, factor both. We will have x times the quantity of x, 2x plus 1. And the other one would be x times the quantity of 3x plus 2. Both has a factor of x. So, cancel x. We will have 2x plus 1 all over 3x plus 2. Next, a squared minus 9 all over a squared plus 2a minus 15. a squared minus 9, we can factor this by difference of two squares. And this one would be factoring general trinomials. So factoring both expressions, both numerator and denominator, we will have a plus 3 times the quantity of a minus 3 all over a plus 5 times the quantity of a minus 3. They both have a factor of a minus 3, so we can cancel that one. So what's left would, so what's left would be a plus 3 all over a plus 5. Next, last example. x minus 4 all over 4 minus x. Notice that 4 minus x can be written in terms of x minus 4 simply by factoring out a negative sign or factoring out negative 1 from the denominator. So this becomes x minus 4 all over negative 1 times the quantity of x minus 4. Since these two factors, x minus 4 and x minus 4, are both found in the numerator and denominator, we could simply cancel that one out. So there's nothing left here, but if there's nothing left here, it will be automatically 1. So that becomes 1 over negative 1, or that is equal to negative 1. So your final answer would be negative 1.
Okay, that's it for simplifying rational expressions.